we're just back from seeing The Method Gun, which is a show over at the Kirk Douglas Theater by Austin's Rude Mix. It's about a, a company of actors um, who are spending nine years rehearsing a streetcar named Desire without any of the main characters appearing on stage and also without the guidance of their guru, Stella, and I keep forgetting Stella's last name. What is I that? think I can fill you in on that. <laughs> Burden. Burden, not Adler. Burden. I keep wanting to say Adler. <laughs> yes, exactly. What, what did you think of the show? I really loved it. I uh, I was Googling it earlier today, and I saw that it had played at Dance Theater Workshop in New York, where I'm from, and I had no idea it was even there. But uh, for me, it wasn't about any one moment. It was about how all of the elements, the the acting, but also the incredible movement, the really interesting lighting, and, and very much the music uh, all came together to give a, a sort of an overpowering feeling at the end that really moved me, even as I left the theater. First of all, I like their nickname, the Rudes, <laughs> the Rude Mechanicals. I also like that in their mission, they're into big ideas and cheap laughs, because that's like the way I feel about life. And, and I think that's how they feel, and, and they're edgy, and, and that's their idea. Uh, I guess the other thing I think about it is if a company wants to be edgy, which this one is, you pretty much have to write your own stuff. It's like a band. If you're a, a band, what, you mean, what are you going to do? Just be a, what do you call them? Like, a tribute band, a cover band your whole life? You have to write your own stuff, and, this, and these people write their own stuff, have a really big repertory, and. Uh, and I, I was a huge fan. Another thing I really liked is we all see so much theater, and I get used to kind of polite laughs so the actors won't be embarrassed, you know, just politely a little giggle. Well, I laughed myself sick in this <laughs> thing. I really laughed a lot, yeah. and I wasn't making it up to, to try to save the actors. I like the point about cheap, la cheap laughs. For me, this was sort of like the midway point between waiting for Godot and waiting for Goffman. Uh, what did you think about it? Well, uh, I love this thing. Um, and I didn't think it was so much weird as it was a little bit absurd and it just kept going in and out of the narrative and breaking that fourth wall and it just and with the exercise on the piece of paper and how they brought that back into it I thought they were just depth. They had depth, they had uh, irreverence, and uh, I like how they were at times really earnest, and then they made fun of that earnestness, and then they were earnest again, and they just, uh, they had me. They had me from the first, first time they even addressed us. I was like, okay, they're like uh, erasing boundaries here, so it could have gone anywhere, but they definitely had this purpose it, it's funny because to me they didn't have me right from the beginning. I decided I loved the show in the last ten minutes of the show yeah. because I found it. I found it really entertaining all along, but I was also really skeptical because I wasn't sure what the payoff was going to be. But anyway, that's uh, our discussion for tonight. Thanks for watching. Everybody.